SureDog.com here with Julie Kedzie, getting ready to compete on UFC on Fox 8 at the end of the month. UFC Bantamweight, Invicta Analyst, and what people might not know, Jackson's MMA Series first and only women's Bantamweight champion. Do we leave anything out? Um, I also might be doing color commentary for uh, arm wrestling in the future. Are you serious? Yes! <laughs> okay, before we get into anything, just, just talk a little bit about that. What is the story with I, I, I'm not sure. You know, I, I met with some people. I, I saw a, an arm wrestling event. I was intrigued. It's definitely a crazy competition. And, uh, you know, they invited me to come back. So I think August 24th, I'm, I'm going to be uh, doing some sort of color commentary for this big national arm wrestling. I don't understand the sport yet, but I'm learning. <laughs> Have you seen the movie Over the Top? Yes, I did my research. I saw Over the Top. I saw Pulling John. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it's a different sport. <laughs> well, you're definitely branching out. Oh, I want to flash back to last summer before you fought Misha Tate. I asked you, when did you expect to see women in the UFC? What you told me was probably five years, at the very least, there'll be super fights, a fight here and there. Obviously, that progress has accelerated. Now you're a part of it. I mean, talk about what that means, and be surprised that it went as fast as it did. Um. You know, uh, part of me surprised, part of me's not, because it's not fast to me for somebody who's been doing it nine years. You know, it's, it took a long time. But, you know, I think it's really, in, it's due to Ronda Rousey and, and just the incredible impact she had on, you know, on everybody and how she wowed, you know, Dana White and, and company. And I think that's awesome. Like, I, I really do think she's kind of the person who got us in the UFC. You, uh been out of action for a while. It was a torn road here? No, it was a torn labrum. Torn labrum. Yeah. Not labia, labrum. Labrum against, <laughs> against Misha Tate. Yeah. Were there any other setbacks between then that kind of kept you out of action or was it just? It, it was mostly just the shoulder. You know, I wasn't sure I was in the UFC till the Carmouche uh, Rousey fight and then at the show. A friend of mine, Melissa, was like, hey, congratulations, you're on the list of people that's, and I was like, I am? Oh, cool. Okay, because I didn't know I'd been picked up. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was just, I was honestly waiting just until the doctor said it's time for you to, you, you can compete again. He did, and I, like immediately was like, I can go. Yeah. So, so talk about that. You didn't, you didn't know, were you watching that fight hoping, hopefully this goes off well, this isn't going to be one of those fights that somehow You know, happens. watching, they did an amazing job with the primetime episodes. Watching it, I knew it was going to go well, like regardless of the outcome, and actually, you know, I mean... It was exciting when Liz jumped on her back and, you know, almost choked her and stuff like that. But uh, I wasn't I wasn't surprised because Liz is so scrappy and she was, you know, we all knew she was going to she was going to pull something up. She wouldn't walk away without being impressive. And then Rousey got her trademark arm bar. But, you know, she got it. Like it was it was cool. Like being in that atmosphere and having everybody on their on their feet cheering and screaming and losing it. I'd say that's the only time I've been really in that atmosphere is when I'm watching a Holly Holm fight live. Like when I watch Holly fight, people on their feet, they're screaming, they're loving her, it's, it's insane. And everybody is just almost connected as a crowd. And I mean, that's that's the feeling I had there. It was really cool to see that in the UFC. Ronda Rousey gets a lot of credit, deservedly so, but your fight with Misha Tate in Strike Force last August, I think even in defeat, it raised your stock just in the eyes of the fans. I mean, do you feel like that's that happened like even in defeat your stock was raised and you got a lot more recognition since then i i do feel like that yeah i feel like i've gotten a lot of recognition from fans and and and, and i'm very appreciative of that and certainly dana white finally said he knows who i am which is nice. <laughs> yeah i noticed i noticed you tweeted your name wrong i think well, it was just okay. a typo yeah <laughs> yeah just a typo. that's fine <laughs> I, everybody calls me mckenzie mrs mcken you know I, I, whatever um i i don't mind that but um it's nice it's nice to be recognized by your peers. It's nice to be recognized the people, by the people who you know might promote you in, in the future. Like, that's a good feeling. Do you have you had a chance to go back and review that Misha Tate fight? I mean, you were you were right on the brink of victory until that armbar. I mean, what goes through your mind if and when you reviewed that tape? Uh, I was mad at myself, really mad at myself, because the only reason I got armbar was well, I mean, she was better than me, and she got the armbar in that case. But I hesitated and I gave it to her, and that was stupid. And I fought it as long as I could, and I saw a moment when I was out of it watching the tape, and I was like, why, why, wasn't, why didn't I recognize that? So it was, it's a really good lesson to learn. Um, I was happy with the fight. I was happy with my scrambles on the ground. Um, you know, my pressure, that was really good. That's how I'm supposed to be. That's how I am in the gym, or I feel that I am in the gym. And it's supposed to happen during fights the way it happens in the gym. And, you know, finally. I mean, I'm a late bloomer. <laughs> finally it came out. So July 27th, UFC on Fox 8. Showed a lot of kickboxing too against Misha Tate. The head kick is what I always think of first in that yeah. fight. But you're fighting an accomplished kickboxer. Yeah, it'll be fun to have a kickboxer, won't it? Jermaine Damon. Yeah, Did I no, say we'll that right? see. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I say her name right. <laughs> um, I, you know, I, 
Again, I, I don't know. Like, I'd like to say, well, this game plan is you take the kickboxer down, the game plan is you, when you she pushes with this hand, you'll see this hand. I can't see any of that right now. Right now, I just want to get out there and scrap. And, and I think that's where I'm my best, is when I'm having fun. And I'm like, I expect to be the best in the world. I am the best in the world. When I go out there, I'm going to prove it. So we mentioned all your different titles, all the different hats you wear for MMA and women's MMA. Over the years, you've been really outspoken for the sport. I always kind of refer to you as an ambassador. Do you see yourself as an ambassador for the sport? Yeah, well, I think anybody, and because it's kind of such a small pool of, of, of talent, or it was such a small pool of talent, Greg Savage, look, we're in. We're in the UFC, Greg Savage. But anyway, um, <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I mean, it is such a, 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 I think we were all ambassadors in a way. You know, I don't think that I stick out any more than anybody else, except that I sure do talk a lot, and that helps. <laughs> so... One of the things I was skeptical about when the UFC first introduced women, were they going to be in the Ronda Rousey business or the women's business altogether? They've proven that they're committed to the 135-pound division. The next question I want to pose to you. Invicta, earlier this year, Michelle Watterson, a team of the year, Jessica Penny. I would say that's a dark horse candidate for fight of the year. So do you see you know, the 105-pound division or any division, do you see the UFC eventually making, making a step forward and adding a different division besides 135? I absolutely see the UFC adding another division besides 135. I would think that they would next probably add the uh, 115ers just because there's a lot of stars in that division. There's a lot of girls who bring a lot of attention to themselves in that division. It's very, very talented. I prefer if they brought in the 125ers because I think that's one of the most underlooked divisions out there. Um, and of course, 105 has amazing stars and amazing talent. And uh, I think they should bring in all of them. <laughs> that's, my, that's my vote. Bring them all in. <laughs> um, just as, a, as an experienced veteran in the sport, you've in the past compared yourself to male fighters such as Chris Lytle. And um, Aaron Riley, who's going to be on the same card with yeah. you. I mean, what, what's it like to share a card with someone like that, someone that you've kind of compared your career path you to? You know what's really cool about sharing a card with Aaron Riley is that he was on my very first card ever. He headlined my very first fight show. And so uh, at the hook and shoot, like he was the headliner. And so to me, it's, I mean, we've been friends for years and years and years. I was friends with him before I even came to Jackson, and then he came to Jackson. So it's cool. It's like, it's like we're all kind of Indiana brothers, you know what I mean? Like, it just, it, it's cool to, to be able to experience that with him, somebody who I consider to be a true legend in the sport and one of my favorite fighters ever. Um, I, I think it's an honor to be on the same card as him again. In closing, just kind of set the scene from that card, and that was back when MMA wasn't necessarily cool. I mean, tell me what it was like, you know, you guys are on that card. It's... What was the scene like? What were the fights like? What was the atmosphere like? Well, I, Evansville and the Hook and Shoot always put on a good show. Like, Jeff always tried to maintain a level of professionalism with the athletes, which was really cool. Um, definitely things have improved since then in terms of, like, fighters. I mean, I'm in the UFC. There's fighter insurance. You know, there's more benefits with, with sponsorships, and, and you, you reach a bigger crowd. And so that's, that's very helpful to your career. And with all the regulations and everything that's come on in the sport, you know, everything's getting kind of sanctioned across the board, so there's no... Well, in this state you can do this, and in this state you can't do that. So that's really cool, and I, I'd say that's a really big change. But, you know, in, in general, when you get out there, a fight's still a fight. So, you know, whether it's 2004 or it's uh, 2013, it, you, you just got to compete at your best level. And that's, you know, I guess that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> I don't know. Shirtdog.com here with Julie Kedzie, UFC on Fox 8. If you can't catch her there, be sure to catch her as an arm wrestling commentator down the road. <laughs> Thanks, Julie. Thank you.